And we here we have our specialists, including <laughs> our special specialists today. Um, okay, so the, the priority samples that were chosen last in our last priority tour are all related to Space 89 and Space 87. And so we are looking now at Space 89, which is a small room uh, that has very intricate set of uh, walls and uh, we are looking right now at its north walls and they include several walls one of which is this one our um, early wall that most likely goes all the way down to um, the foundation of this whole room and then we have a buttressing little wall that is right here uh, abutting the wall that I'm standing on and it has a face plaster and it doesn't run very on a very large surface but it could be going this way. We don't know really the relationship between this wall and that little buttressing wall and this wall is, it has a corner and it has a, a plaster face on both sides of that corner and that um, could be a later addition in, to the room, including the foundation wall-like structure down there below. And uh, we still don't completely understand the relationship of, of the walls and of the walls and the room. And one possibility is that the room actually was having a lot of problems. The, the outside walls might have had a lot of problems and they simply wanted to isolate this whole corner of the larger building that this could have been before it got separated in three smaller rooms. And so the isolating in this case meant uh, shoring this wall with this uh, combination of different types of walls put inside and uh, filling in the entire space with redeposited building materials. And the reason that we are thinking that this um, hypothesis is feasible is that we in the walls, such as this one, we have, uh, as building material, we have this strange looking clay, very hard clay, that appears also um, appeared in the fill of the building, which might indicate that that wall, or at least some bricks of the wall, and the fill were put in at the same time. But we will see, we're still looking for the floor of the building, we have not found any floor yet. There are some indications of possible floors in, in the south wall of this room, but they are not really substantial, so we don't know where the floor uh, would have been. We are also hypothesizing a crawl hole in this room, which is a hole in this area crawl hole, and that is because we, we do have one straight line, to some extent straight line, um, where the bricks stop. And we have then uh, filled in this area with a lot of bricky material, but really not proper bricks. And the south wall of the building was also built in a um, quick time, and um, and it was not uh, really built uh, properly in the sense that the bricks are uneven and a little irregular. They're certainly not all on the same plane as we usually have and as we can see in the west wall. And also their foundation in, in some instances seems to be more rubble and bricky material than uh, proper bricks. So here we are dealing with an um, interesting room. And the fill was um, very rich, midden-like, and had a lot of remains of uh, building, redeposited building material, ovens, some, uh, some hearts, uh, fragmented hearts, and a lot of small finds. Tanya, can you just list yeah, what? Uh, several mini clay balls, parts of bigger balls, uh, 
obsidian point, a figurine, animal figurine, um, some polished stone, some two uh, owls. Mm -hmm. uh, they are complete. They were complete. And uh, a lot of obsidian flakes. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the debitage. Nothing important except this obsidian point. Mm -hmm. And a lot of small uh, parts of bones, a uh, large quantity of bones. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was uh, at the higher level of the midden. Now we are at the level which lack this material. It's, uh, the inclusions consist of uh, charcoal and uh, uh, obsidian flakes, and that is all now. Mm -hmm. And it's harder fill, right? Harder yeah, it's clay. Harder it's clay. more like um, bricky clay than like typical fill. Okay, so we, how many samples did we chose, did choose last week? We chose two, uh, 8406, but 8406 is the one that's gone missing. It's gone missing, so 8406 sample is gone missing, so we only ended up with one, 8405. Okay. But there are bones in 8406. Yeah, it's just about the quotation mm -hmm. Ah, so it's not completely missing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's hear what you then had to say, had to say about the bones of 8406. Now first, generally, what kind of fill that was? It is a fill that is very different from the uh, fill of midden area of the house. It's not structured and uh, uh, the bones in it uh, do not seem uh, related. Uh, there are a lot of bones, uh, these are large uh, fragments, and uh, there are a lot of species, um, and especially there are wild species. There is uh, red deer and roe deer, aurochs, uh, a horse, a small horse, fox, and I think that is all of uh, wild species. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the um, the bones and what are they, they telling uh, what kind of field that was. Well, uh, there are some uh, few interesting examples. Uh, first, there are several bones uh, which are weathered. That means that they were somewhere on the surface and then they were thrown into the space. Then there are some bones uh, which were thrown into the space uh, fresh. Uh, this is evidenced uh, because uh, those bones are uh, with unfused uh, elements, and uh, they were found uh, um, both the main bone and those uh, unfused animals which fallen apart only when uh, they were excavated. Mm -hmm. And the particularly interesting uh, find is one vertebra of red deer with unfused uh, vertebra body cups, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which were all found. And additionally, another cap of uh, uh, succeeding vertebrae is uh, found. So those bones, there is also um, a leg bone from roe deer, also uh, from young animal, and also uh, diaphysis and epiphysis are found. And so those bones were um, thrown uh, when fresh, uh, and um, so we can somehow say in situ they are not redeposited. Re Mm -hmm. And uh, then there are a few fine examples of um, butchering, that is of filleting. There is one scapula of roe deer, of uh, sheep, uh, excuse me, uh, which has nice filleting uh, cut marks mm -hmm. on, its, uh, on its blade. Mm -hmm. And this is what is John interested uh, about, maybe to uh, make an illustration mm -hmm. about that. Uh, um, because uh, those filleting uh, marks are very precise and in the same time uh, there are no dismemberment uh, marks which uh, we could expect on, the, on uh, it. And that is why they, we may say they, are ver they were very used, very skillful mm -hmm. and probably uh, mm, uh, especially when sheep uh, uh, is uh, concerned because they knew uh, it very, very well, and the how to butcher, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, butchering, dismembering animal, and not um, leaving the traces of the artifacts. They were cutting only skin and tendons and meat, and uh, that's mm -hmm. skillful. Mm -hmm. 
um, that was general about the field, so I have that uh, thought that uh, that uh, field is not um, uh, made all at once, mm -hmm. uh, that it is uh, uh, made in several occasions. Uh, because different uh, bones are in there, and this is not a field which is made of um, as a consequence on, of everyday activity mm -hmm. activities. Because there are so many wild wild animal bones and um, different uh, And one uh, uh, anything, what else uh, should we try to understand uh, whether there are uh, differences? Be, be, uh, in the space itself, because we, this is why we uh, have chosen units uh, 8, 0, uh, 6, and 6, five. 6 and 5, mm -hmm. and there are differences, although I'm not really certain what they mean, because at 6 unit it is very rich uh, with large animals, wild animals and so on, while uh, the other unit, 5, is not so rich and mostly it uh, has uh, sheep and goat uh, bones. Uh -huh. So maybe we should look uh, more um, about those differences. Yeah, let me just yeah mention what she's absolutely uh, right because we uh, we found uh, when excavating we found these bones uh, stratifying in layers. I mean, uh, just mechanical layers, but they were layered. And it is true that the larger bones are. Um, were situated in the western part of the uh, space and the, the small bones or parts of bones were situated in the eastern part. Absolutely true. So, but also the division between the, the other deposits in the space, between yeah. 8 yeah. and 5, uh, eight I mean not 8, uh, 6 and 5, is that, that one was... Uh, Ricky, uh, rich in Ricky material and lighter in color and this was uh, former, stronger, a lot of uh, clay lamps O5 uh, with uh, clay lamps. building material, right? Yeah, yeah. One Both. More like building material. Yeah. yeah, this is more like building material, and this is like clay or something which could be used for foundation or something. Yeah, but, but I would call that more like building material, this dry mm -hmm. area with a lot of bricky. The dry and area was uh, just yeah. like uh, over there North where. West. Yeah, north, uh, northwest part. Northeast mm -hmm. part. Where, North the, East, where uh, the present uh, uh, 8433 unit is. Okay. That's why we did. I you know. have uh, something more to say. Uh, there are some evidences on um, uh, some bones in weathering crafts, there were staining manganese, oxid staining, black staining. Mm -hmm. And this could mean that the um, uh, environment was wet, that the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the field was wet for longer uh, uh -huh. time. You mean after they were after they yes, were deposited, yes, they yes. were they were in wet in conditions. Wet conditions. Yes. Uh, oh. you, you mean moist? Yes. It was very wet here, and most of the bones fall, fall apart, fell apart when we were trying to pick them up. Yeah. 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 There's a little river that comes down here, isn't there? That little <coughs> stream. It goes along the, the tenth side, yeah. and it does come in here. So it's possible that the water flow throughout the prehistory and later, this whole area, somehow goes this way. Because we still can see in the walls presently, even though they're exposed, they have been exposed for five years, they're still moist in certain areas and dry in certain areas, which would indicate that the water flow of precip precipitating water is always the same. And it could have been like that even in prehistory, in the lower levels, slightly lower. Uh, okay, so just to finish, what I, I wanted to make the distinction, distinction between uh, 06 and 05. And, and 06 was the one in this area that's in the western area. And that is where there is more material that is midden-like. It's a, a, it's a building material, but mixed with the midden-like remains. And in the other eastern part, we had those dry, uh, dryer uh, dryer remains, and that was not uh, mixed with min material as much. So, yes. e are the bones that you're talking about, Vesna, coming from the western part of the... And those large bones, yes. Yeah. A lot so of bones and wild, wild species. And wild species. Okay, so that could mean that this was exposed and used for a while as a 
some sort of midden area in which they were depositing the bones after certain you know, occasions. Not, we don't want to talk about feasting necessarily, but <laughs> when uh, we have two, two evidences of filleting on two scapulas. But that is not enough to talk about uh, feasting activity, okay. about one event. Uh, bones are not so related. So a large meat consumption, shall we say, at the, after those events, the bones were deposited uh, in here. Um, okay, so it's too bad that we don't have the botanical sample from the same area, because this would have been botanically very rich area, as opposed to the other unit that you have, which is O5, which is maybe not so rich. But let's see what um, there is. Okay, so we have A405. Um, had a moderate density of wood, so it had, and so it was had quite a bit of material. And then, without wood, it was a low density. Uh, the, the sample was the majority of the sample was wood, and there was some cereal. Uh, the material was in mixed condition, so from um, different types of wood. Some were uh, had been burned at very high temperatures and had uh, fallen apart and some were in much better condition. Uh, there was also a little bit of uh, chaff, um, pulse, and a few wild seeds, but not really very much else besides the wooden cereal, which is not, makes the sample, it's not, it's not very, um, it's quite similar to material you find all over, mm -hmm. except for the fact that it had uh, a moderate density, which is unusual for Phil. I think most of the samples, the fill samples that I looked at had low densities. And this one had quite a, a moderate one. And um, also, the, there, was, there, was, there was a lot of uh, larger pieces of wood that had been that broken up. Now, would it have this, if there was some, some movement of water throughout the area, not really spring like or river like, but the, just water that was going through the bricks, in between the bricks, and so forth, would that, uh, could that have affected the amount of the botanical material? Probably not, because these, you are looking at the larger... Uh, yeah, it shouldn't have, if they're, if they're carbonized, it shouldn't have destroyed anything. And, right, right. And also, and then we did look at the, the sieved material from uh, oh, 8406, mm -hmm. and that was all wood, but there was quite a, a lot of it, a lot oh, of large, large pieces. pieces of wood. Yeah, this area, this room had always uh, had a lot of uh, wood remains. I mean, from the top. On top, we had a uh, uh, almost burned in situ. And they do, did seem like burned in situ planks of a structure that could have been the roof of the building, and it fell down in and on top of um, the bucranium and everything else that was found close to the surface in this room. But then all of that was then sitting on top of this large. Uh, fill that we have been talking about today. So, and no floor in between. And so it is possible also that, well, you know, I can't draw um, links between the two <laughs> without stretching it to one. I was going to ask, what was the sample directly above 8406? Or the unit directly above 8406? Yeah, we have some. We can, maybe we can look at that sample. Yeah, that was A3088. Oh, uh, A388, and yes. it's, uh, it's almost the same. Right. So, so we can use yeah, it as a... Bones of animals are almost the same, so uh, that is... I would say identical. Uh, well, it's so similar that it could be... Well, well, let's choose that unit now for the next priority unit. And so then you, you let's make sure that it doesn't... Um, I think it's already, it's already <laughs> no, 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 I think it's it uh, A388. Okay, well, let's move on to our next priority unit, right? We are done with 89 for now. Right? And then we'll, we'll choose one of the. Okay. Your I mean, because I want to continue, do you want to, to do did this? You, did you give it a unit number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you'll give them that and... Okay, just, just to give them the, that spread. Because, yeah, okay. 
Uh, but let's finish with this one because this one was analyzed and then we'll get back to it here. Okay. Um, you, you it's not much to see in here, actually. Yeah. You know. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll have that on film. Don't, don't hurry up. Let's finish this first. Oh. Now because we are looking at 87, space 87, which is our space where the two burials have been excavated under excavation. And uh, we are looking at the, at the moment what we see is two burial cuts and uh, we see the remains of the floor and, and uh, packing under the floor in various areas. So we are removing those floors right now and the packings. But uh, because the burials are quite complicated, both of them have at least two individuals each, if not more. And they are all in layers, buried in the different, maybe at different um, events, or as uh, maybe each burial a single event, two people together. We don't know. We are uh, they're quite complicated, and we are looking at another possible cut, burial cut that is underneath these two cuts. So yeah, in that area. In this area. So then we um, chose as a priority unit um, 8421, 8421 which is in the, the cell around these two. Right. And can you tell us about the skeletons in that very Yeah, um, there are two, skele two well, skeleton numbers, 8423, 8425, 8423 was a juvenile, about maybe 9 to 11 years old, almost all of the skeleton was there. 8425 is just a cranium and a uh, mandible, and that's all that we have found so far in terms of those two, and it was an adult. Right. And there, there, there seems to be some, um, some digging into the existing burials from high, slightly higher up, because the, at the very uh, layer, level of the uh, floor that we see right now, we had some scattered human bones. Mm -hmm. And we had some finds that could be related to those scattered bones, or could be related more to the scattered bo human bones than to the properly buried human bones down there. So uh, there was some disturbance to the burial, and uh, we wanted to see. Uh, and there is also a baby bones that are yeah, there showing are some up. Yeah, there's some baby bones. There's this disturbed cranium and the mandible, and then that man, uh, an adult mandible, and then we just got yesterday a very small infant bone right. coming out that doesn't relate to the two known skeletons. And we know that this room was a, a rather special room in the sense that. It, um, more had more of that symbolic type of content than the next door room, eight, space 88, because we, not only that we have very heavily plastered walls with uh, many, many layers of uh, replastering on them, but we also have painted walls in that area. And so, um, yeah, so we are quite very interested to find out um, uh, who was buried here and how and how many people and all that. So, do we have anything interesting interesting yeah. about sound? 8421 uh, sample has a low density. Uh, the de deposit was clear in terms of botanical means comparison to the other, the other mm -hmm. burial field. This mm -hmm. one is, has a less botanical means. Uh, it has mostly wood. There is some serious fragments and they are very burned and very few. Uh, and there's a few chaff remains. Uh, there's one piece of nut and a few nutshells, probably from almond. Um, not, not much wild seeds, just a few, and there's a scarfous piece of species. Um, the other world feel was quite different. Uh, it was this, I thought, it's uh, looking like middle. Mm -hmm. the, the burial yeah, that, that's when it's at eight. Eight, four, three, eight, five. That's at eight, three, eight, one. Uh, okay. So yeah. they could, maybe should we compare the also the outside field? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. The floor the, I'm looking at now. The floors. You mean the floors and the yeah, parking? Floors and the floors. So that we can see whether there is. It. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could choose those for. Uh, Priority unit, the stuff that Laurie is digging right now. We could have that as a priority unit. Eight four six seven. Eight four six seven. So basically, the botanical remains uh, didn't show anything special except that the bigger burial cut had more midden in light and denser, and the small uh, cut 
was like almost botanically clean and clean. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. So they're not the same. Mm -hmm. so. Cereal pulse, you know, the uh, herbaceous matter, mm -hmm. wood, mm -hmm. it's very, very diverse. Mm. This one is just a few not very much in it, bad yeah. condition yeah. cereals. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, uh, I must say that, that looking as you were excavating through them, they didn't look much, uh, they didn't look like the burial fields that we are used to because they didn't have any middeny appearance. Mm -hmm. it yeah. was. And this one in particular actually was very soft and just really gave way very easily. With very, it didn't look as very much was in it compared to this one. I mean, you could see it, it was very soft. And it wasn't like the burial field yeah, from the Northwest right. platform. That's most, right. Most of that material that was coming from the mid and underneath the Underneath it, right. Whereas this, this is, is so somewhere close. coming in from right. the else, elsewhere coming in. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll then have another priority unit for next week from here. It, it's already yes, made. about the bones, but I don't have much to say because there were no large bones. In, again, there are micro vertebrates, which are um, almost the same as in previous unit that was described uh, already. There is uh, one uh, uh, mouse uh, lower jaw, and uh, mm, it is of light color, but it has black staining. Mm -hmm. So. I think that that problem of whether mouse bones are intrusive or not, and uh, recent or not, this is a problem from, for the whole area, in fact, and we maybe should not speak any more about that. But uh, the possibility that animals were uh, 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 involved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in yeah. this situation is there. Oh, we had extensive animal runs. Through the, yes. throughout both of these burials, in particular this one, and it's going to these walls. And you right you mean um, the those recognizable holes of mm -hmm. the same diameter and loose dirt and dark dirt and bones being moved mm -hmm. back and forth? Because be maybe um, there on the house uh, the soil, not dirt floor, <laughs> so. all those holes that we see, they are probably from from the same rodent species. But here may be also foxes involved. Mm. It is possible. Mm. Mm. And how do you know that? Uh, so there, the was a, there was a fox tooth there. Again, there was a fox mandible in that space mm -hmm. there. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> Can you tell by the diameter of the Yes, hole? but I didn't see anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, that's why I'm it. asking you yeah. about uh, the... Um, the size of the floor. Yes. Well, I can, you know, when I open these, I can show it to you, but it's yes. quite extensive. It's, it's, it's yes, big. Yes, you could show me. Yeah. How big is a fox hole? Well, I don't know exactly, but it is bigger and different than those holes there. <laughs> yes, all of those holes. <laughs> that one in the wall. <laughs> and that one in the wall. Well, I'm thinking about, you know, rodent uh, um, sub Next. subsurface uh, houses. Oh, yeah. There are a network of channels, and uh, um, on the end of the, the channels, uh, it should be a room, you know, space. I'm sure that <laughs> a rolling <laughs> hole. <laughs> it's, yeah. called, it's called to, a. <laughs> I have a drawing of rodents and people and buried people and everyone under here. <laughs> sometimes when I walk up in the morning, Uncanny. sometimes when I walk up in the morning, I imagine them all going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of talking, the mice are all talking, and all, yes, the ghosts, kind of all the ghosts of the people are talking. You know, I, I, I was thinking uh, about rodents, because there are so many holes uh, on the mound. Who is digging here on the mound more? Yeah. We yeah. or them? Or them. <laughs> Who moves more yeah, dirt or soil? <laughs> there is another point. <laughs> they yeah. don't have a permit, and we do. Mm. They're residents. <laughs> They're residents. <laughs> and there is another point uh, that maybe there is, that is rather recent situation because the area is now different. It is dry, and uh, mm. uh, those rodents. I'm not sure that they lived uh, here when uh, the environment was marshy. Ah, that's and true. maybe um, we should think about the preservation of the site and how to prevent uh, uh, rodents to do so More much damage, damage yeah. to 
Mm. Uh, is there Houses. anything to do? Yes, I think really? at least uh, we could try to ask specialists mm -hmm. about that and possibly there is a way to prevent that. But they have heart holes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they are cute, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's okay. move to Space 88. So we have so far chosen two units for the next priority. Okay. Three. Three. And three. 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 And market it priority. That yes, that's the priority. Right, priority. Mm. And then uh, here in Space 88, where we have just begun uh, exca oh, the continuation of the excavation, is this uh, black area with uh, very greasy uh, organic deposits, uh, something that looks like the oven or around the oven deposits. And uh, that would be with a lot of shell. And this area for you guys, this area has a lot of elements of uh, being used for grinding pigments. We have a number of uh, indications of uh, pigment and stone a stone grinder, and uh, we had one uh, uh, river shell with uh, pigment inside, and we had a bone tool that goes with it, and what else, Dushin, it was? Yeah, there was another antler tool uh, uh, in, in that, but it, that was actually in the packing of the platform here. Yeah, I uh, mm -hmm. And then there was a, another pigment found yesterday here in this part of the platform, yeah. again in the packing of the platform. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, that shell with, uh, with uh, uh, red uh, sort of pigment was was found in this area here on top of the floor that was actually covering, or the packing that was actually covering the, the, the child remains. Uh. Uh, so what it looks like at the moment is that this whole black area is uh, used as, as a packing rather than be the in situ remains of some activity that, that was producing this material. Even though it is at the level of the floor, we have some floor remains right at the same level as this. Over here in this corner, a little bit of floor in that corner, the rest of the floor is gone. But it still does not seem to, because we don't have anything, we don't have any oven, any heating, anything fire related in this space so far to indicate that this kind of uh, result could be produced. All the, the, that we had in here, all the features, are either platform or basins, such as that white plaster basin in there, or set in the floor grinding stones and things like that. But we did have some fill on this side, especially on this side of the space, mm. which is the southern half of the space. We had redeposited mater building materials here on top of this. So this could still be part of that redeposited um, even though it looks nicely layered and has these nice shells around. And yeah, perhaps there are some, some sort of older floors underneath the... Yeah, but it, we will send this to you as a sample because I, we think that you might find this very useful, right? Yeah. In terms of botanical remains and maybe even bones. Maybe. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. So, what... You, they have the, the unit number. The unit number is 8463. That's just the burning. 8463. 8463. And the space is 88. All right. Um, and then in the building three, at the moment, we are really going through the thin layers of uh, white floor plasters and packings under those. and. Uh, we have in the past sampled those for priorities and they have not showed very much differences, so we are not now prioritizing those. But we will make, maybe do one priority from the kitchen, uh, Dragana. How about doing the priority from our kitchen area in building three? Um. Do you think that the, the floor that you have uh, excavated yesterday that part, the thick floor, I think could produce a lot of interesting yes. material. Yeah, which, what unit was that? Uh, 8445. And that was a thick layer of at least one floor, maybe two floors, it was difficult to distinguish, and uh, uh, packings that were in the south, uh, southeast area uh, of the feature, oven feature 778, so in this area. 
it's quite thick, two, two, two and a half to three centimeters thick deposits, and a lot of um, breakout. Yeah. Right? How about stubbles cut? Right. Bones. Yeah, and we have another small, very small unit, um, which is our obsidian cache. Uh, that uh, that had um, two uh, two large pieces of obsidian and had uh, uh, three larger flakes with it still in the cache, so it was most likely almost completely empty. And it was right here in this corner, this cut, the irregular cut, uh, which was which would have been right below the ladder that, that was up here. And it was uh, under an oven that in the later period was built in this area. And this was the um, cut in the wall was made for the oven. So we had a big oven in this area that was sitting on top of this cache. The cache was right here. The obsidian was right in this area. Uh, it's in, it is really questionable why these people would have left the obsidian in it. But they did. And the number of the, the, number of the field is 8446. That's what we need. 8446. And that feature has it has a feature number. It's 799. And that should be really a small sample. It's maybe uh, one bucket altogether at the moment. Okay, I think that's probably enough, huh? Yeah. <laughs> if not too many. <laughs> yeah, are you happy? Do you want some more? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything in this area now we said that yeah. the floors don't produce much. Okay. Anybody has anything else to add? Anything um, interesting or funny? <laughs> Can you say something in Serbian? Radi, 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 Which means work, work, Mira. Go to work. Stop talking. <laughs>